Shakes have no name We're still building them Finding that love Finding that love Yeah, when I go there I go there with you It's all I can do The cities of love Journeys Crossing. Thanks for tuning in and watching this special broadcast this morning. We want to share with you some worship highlights from last year. That's right. Hey, a quick big shout out to our arts team, our band, our choir, our production team. Just want to thank you for all your hard work this past year. It's been an awesome year. We learned a lot. We've grown a lot. Man, we're looking forward to serving together this new year also. So hey, let's start the year right. Let's worship together. Get those hands together. 
together, everyone. Let's do this.
morning, JC family. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Good morning. Hey, good morning and happy New Year, Journeys Crossing. How are you? So we wanna take a couple of minutes and do a year in review. And you know what? So many fun things have even happened here in the parking lot. Like remember this Sunday fun day? <laughs> Also, we've had some opportunities to connect with our community, like remember Trunk or Treat or all those food distributions we've had? Okay, now let's head on in the building. Hey, so here we are in the lobby on a Sunday morning. You know, there have been so many great things that have happened here inside this lobby this year. Like, remember all of those Serve Saturday events? Let's head into the auditorium where we have seen baptisms and we've learned and grown together so much over this past year. cannot go back in time. It cannot be fixed. So what you're waiting for many times is something that's impossible. And it's better for you to decide to cancel that debt so you're not consumed by that toxicity. Have you ever stopped, if you're a follower of Jesus, have you ever stopped and thought about the fact that he noticed you? Okay, and we cannot forget about the youngest members of our church at JC Kids and all that's been going on for them and how they've been connecting to God and each other. Let's check it out. There's so many great things happening with our students in JC Live every Sunday. Let's head on in there right now. We cannot forget about our online campus and all the ways we've been able to connect with people right where they are online throughout the week. Let's go in and say hi to the broadcast team. Well, that's it for our year in review, Journey's Crossing. It's been a great year. I cannot wait to see what God is going to do in 2023. So, from Vernell and I, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Enjoy! Like a sweet summer day, you take away all my troubles. Like a sun thrown away, you wash away all my pain. Every time I look at you and what you do, you makes me happy. The joy I can't explain every time I call your name. Jesus the love's incredible and is also marvelous. Jesus the love's incredible, it's glorious, it's marvelous. Jesus so grace is wonderful, you've been so good. Love's incredible, glorious, marvelous. Listen, like a little baby boy that's full of joy, I can feel you breaking away my chains and healing all my pains of yesterday. When we both knew I was wrong, oh Lord, it was a long before you held me, wiped away from my face and gave me grace. So 
I can say, Ooh, Jesus loves incredible, 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 and it's so oh, so marvelous. marvelous. Jesus your loves love. incredible, and this, marvelous, and this. glorious. Ooh. Jesus your grace is wonderful. You've, You've been, been so good, good to us. Jesus your loves incredible, glorious, marvelous. Holy yeah. oh, soul. I love you. You know, at the end of the year, we reflect. Uh, we look back and we see our success and we also see our struggles and challenges. I mean, the waves of COVID have created stress for all of us and pain. We've lost jobs, we've had grief and illness, and we've had death. It's been a lot, but God has been with us, giving us strength and helping us to endure and to grow stronger and stronger. In spite of the challenges, we've maintained support for all of our global missionaries in Spain, Thailand, Uganda, Colombia, Ethiopia, Latin America, France, Ukraine. We even added the Shell family uh, who moved to Germany. And the Shells started with Journeys Crossing in our early years as a young couple who was dating. And then they got married and now they're off on a mission. And we've done thousands of acts of tiny little acts of kindness locally. Small things really make a difference. Thank you, project and group leaders and everyone who served. Thank you for serving, for loving people and making Jesus famous. We could not have done it without you. In 2022, we offered a variety of small groups, Bible studies, health support recovery, AA meets five days a week at Journey's Crossing at 12 noon. Early last year, we started churchwide Bible storytelling groups with the Turn the Page series. We engage with stories from creation all the way to Jesus' resurrection at Easter. And in the summer, we started relational discipleship training and continue to develop our Bible stories and discipleship training through relationships in the fall. At Journey's Crossing, small group leaders work together as our frontline pastors, caring for people and helping them to take their next steps of healthy growth in life and faith. So thank you, small group leaders and team leaders, we celebrate your commitment as intentional leaders who are building relational environments to help people find and follow Jesus. This helps us to accomplish our mission together. It's a team sport. None of us is made to travel alone. Listen in to Cindy Heredia's story. She attended a small group and she attended our training for relational discipleship. And she started a small group last summer and then continued with the fall. Here's Cindy's story. Enjoy. It's amazing. Before I even came to, to Journey's Crossing, I was looking, I had already known about God. I actually was raised a Catholic, so I knew of God. I believed in God. I didn't really have a relationship in Him. Hmm. So I started attending Journey's Crossing. It was then that I decided I wanted to know a little more about God. So I decided to just connect myself with the people of JC. And then I went on my very first mission trip. For me, that was life-changing. It was to Mexico. I knew that God was tugging on my shoulder to do this trip. So I went with about, I guess it was 13 other people. It was the most amazing trip. I've never been the same. I saw God's love work in our lives and in the lives of the children. We went to an orphanage, but we were blessed to be able to love and just teach and be involved in a lot of activities with them. And it was then that I realized this servant thing is amazing. I think I love it. I think I want to be a part of this, and I think this is like where my passion is. I was told I wanted to be doing everything and everything possible to serve and love on others and just constantly not only do it there in Mexico, but bring it back to the States. And that's what I did. I came back and I decided that I wanted to help out with JC and serve and 
it was the start of many more mission trips. I went on probably about 12 other mission trips after that to Peru and to a, a lot of South American areas. I also went to a Native American tribe in Arizona. And that's when I knew God was in my life to stay. I was always kind of searching and wanting to see what was out there. There was gotta be more, more for me to do, something I'm supposed to be doing. And I just was blessed enough to be able to have found it and doing it. So I also have been blessed to be a part of a lot of amazing groups. I'm presently leading a small group. So for me, that is life-changing in itself, just to see the life-changing in others. And I'm praying that those members that were part of my very first small group will continue to actually lead new small groups. You know, we are called to make disciples and more disciples. So my prayer is that those small group members will go on to lead other small groups. I am amazed at what God is doing, not only in my life, but the lives of so many other people. So I've known Kelly for probably years now. We met when we were working together at one of our schools and we were teaching together and saw each other every day. And JC had already been a part of my life, so I wanted her to be a part of that. So I kind of asked her to come to Jeremy's Crossing. She hesitated a few times, we gave her her space, but I kept on insisting that she came to at least one service. And she came to that service, she loved it. Long story short, she's never stopped coming. I have seen such an amazing growth in where God is working in her life and the love that she has for God and for others. She's been baptized. She brought her mom and her sister. Her sister and her, they were baptized together. So this has been an amazing ride to just see her growth. And now there's talk that she will probably be a part of our Mexico mission trip with me. I know I'm doing God's work and it's God doing it, it's not me. And so for me, it's just, I'm a tool being used by him. And I feel blessed that he's chosen me to be that tool to help bring others. I'm really doing my best to live a kingdom lifestyle and be kingdom minded. And doing so is a life changing. You, you are definitely a new person. You begin thinking differently, you begin acting differently. And for me, it's a joyful thing to know that God is working, using me mm -hmm. and working in me to help and bring others. We can be very self-centered individuals where we think of only ourselves sometimes and think that we know God and we go to church and this is awesome, I, I, I kind of a mentality. But it's a different mentality when you're starting to think of the fact that we are called to bring others, others to feel like we feel and to do and to have those experiences like we're having through God. I want those to feel God's power and joy just like I do. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to serve. We're called to love. Here's what a few of Cindy's group members said about their following Jesus together Bible storytelling group experience. First, I'm really thankful for the whole group. I feel like we're a little family. Being a part of the group has helped me to feel connected in more than one way. Not only have I found connection with others, which is actually tough for me, but I'm continuing to feel a close connection with God more and more every day. I couldn't be more grateful for that. Having a relationship with Jesus is the best gift in the world. Another person says, joining a small group for me has been one of the best things I could have done to get out of my comfort zone and really open up on my journey with Jesus. She says, thank you, Cindy. As our leader, you showed kindness and patience, and I've never been so supported, prayed for, and overall loved by my community. Don't you want to be part of a group like that? I'm telling you, some of the guys in the group were like, I've never shared this kind of thing with my friends. It is making a difference in my life. So as you look forward into the new year, will you make a decision to get connected to a group? You are not made to do life alone. If you haven't attended our Sunday Next Interactive Experience, start there, do it now. Uh, and if you'd like to make some friends and find a small group, sign up to attend our connection event on Sunday, January 29th at 1 p.m. Text the word groups to 301-880-1543 to sign up. There is power in community. Maybe you need help to find a Bible reading plan, or you need friends to do the journey with you. Will you make this your best year ever? 
Check out Joe's story. He attended Next and he joined a small group and he says it's changed his life. He's even planning to go on a mission trip. Let's lean in to hear his story. It'll inspire you to take your next step of faith just like he has. Happy New Year. Well, life before, it wasn't too bad, but I didn't feel like I was I was living for the Lord completely. Growing up, I always believed, you know, always try to read a word here and there, but I didn't feel like I was doing what I was supposed to do. I would come to church maybe every other week, once a month, and I, you know, inside I knew it wasn't right. And, you know, things started happening in my life where I started dealing with like a lot of lost my, my dad, my grandma, and an uncle of mine, like back to back years. And my life started trickling down, I noticed. I started getting into drinking a lot. And it wasn't living the life I knew I was supposed to be living. And then after that, like uh, going through it with my wife at the time, we couldn't get on the same page. And then we end up getting a divorce. Then maybe six months to a year after that, Something click. I don't know what it was. I like to say it was the prayers from everyone. They know what I was going through, but something has clicked and said, all right, Joe, it's, you can't be on this fence. You can't be going to church Sunday and then partying the rest of the week. So I, I decided to get off the fence and follow the Lord. So first I started, you know, going to church every Sunday and then, you know, talking to people here. They're like, why don't you join a group? Uh, and then I decided to join a group, and at first I was scared to speak a little because I felt like they knew more than me. So I didn't feel like my input would help. But then man, as the weeks went by, I got better and I participated more. Then after that, I joined the next class here. And they really helped a lot. I really felt like that really maybe got me over the hump of my like being afraid. but. I really believe like the next class really helped me a lot. And I felt like at that point, I like, okay, I'm doing something right. You know, my life is going better. I feel good about myself. And then, you know, the things that used to tempt me, it was the drinking mostly. Those things started, that's not something that I needed. You know what I mean? And, and I just felt like my life just started getting better and better and then, you know, as you know, my, my three babies got baptized, and that was a proud moment. Oh, I got I had three wonderful babies. My oldest is 11, Jojo, my junior. He's in a middle school now. Um, my second son is Jaden. Yeah, he's in the fifth grade. And, and my baby is Melody, and she's in kindergarten. My three babies. I was baptized already, but when they got baptized, it, it's, it, it put a smile on my face I can't take off. And then having them come to me and ask me and not me pushing them, I guess all of that combined has made me feel like, okay, the life is going in the right direction. I feel like I'm doing the right thing now. So I guess, you know, um, i like to thank you and Barb and everybody at Journeys praying for me and sticking in there with me when I didn't know where I was going. I don't know where I would have ended up. I mean, I feel it's like a happiness, like my spirit feels good. You know what I mean? I always like, you know, try to put on a smile, but inside and dealing with so much, it was hard. But now I feel like the smile's now <laughs> always a real smile. I feel like there's a lot of positivity in my life. The energy is different. The people around me are different. The friends I had, I still have them. And you know, this is something I'm praying on now is I don't want to put a lot of distance between them because I want them to this joy. And I want them to come to church, but at the same time, it's some of the things, like I can't be into that. <laughs> My life has changed. And so that's where I'm at now, where I feel like I could help people. I'm not the, the best, but I, I feel like I can at least help, you know, get them on the right path. Well, I think it's, is it August? It's a mission trip. I always wanted to go on one, you know, but now I feel like I'm in a position where I could do that. No, so that's, that's what I'm looking forward to next year. And it's growing. It's growing. Um, like we're in a group now, and I feel like I participated in this one, and I know like what's coming up next. Maybe I should lead one. You know, I'm still thinking about that, but I want to continue to grow. I don't want to get stagnant. I don't want to sit still. I want to grow. Of course, I tell them, get off the fence, but how could they get off? They have to 
truly think to their self and, you know, go alone in a room by their self. And what do you really want for your life? Do you want to play both sides? Do you think the Lord wants you playing both sides? And then you have to make a decision. And it might be tough. It might be hard to give up some things, but you have to make that decision in your life. Which way you want to go? Like I said, it's, it's one of the toughest things ever. But when you make that decision, <laughs> you see how your life gets better. So for anybody out there that know what to do, take that time to yourselves, pray on it, talk to the Lord, but make the right decision and you'll see your life change. Hey everyone, happy new year. I cannot believe that it's 2023. If we haven't met and there are so many new Journeys Crossing people that I haven't met these days, which is super cool. Well, not that we haven't met, but my name is Scott Velasquez and I'm the youth pastor here at Journeys Crossing. And I know 2022 might have been a whole bunch of different things for you. Like everybody experiences different things in the span of a year. Some years are amazing for some people and those same years are absolutely awful, soul sucking, painful forever. I never want to experience that again for others. But after a really rough few years, 2022 kind of felt like the year that we could rally. And with God's help, it feels like we have. And that's so true about Journey's Crossing as a church and about us as a youth ministry. And so let, let me just start here. So if you're a part of the 20 or so group of crazy adults that is the youth team here at Journey's, may I just say thank you. Thank you so much for serving students and their families and our community and helping them all find and follow Jesus in 2022. And man, did you ever. Like we've had over a hundred new students come through our doors and a dozen students pledge their lives to Jesus in baptism in 2022. So cool. And we're actually a bigger youth group now than we were before COVID, if you can believe it. And events aside, and we had a lot of events, we're watching students come together, connect again to being a youth group, a family, a group that's connected to each other and to smart adults that love them and are helping each other to, to grow in a friendship with Jesus. And that is a really amazing thing. And a lot of that's happening right here in this new youth space that we've been in for about a year and a half now, which is crazy to think about. And it's called The Warehouse. And we have done a ton of work to make this the, one of the premier spaces in Montgomery County for students to just come and be, where they can belong and be real with each other and grow and have a ton of fun and learn how God made them to be workers inside his kingdom. We call them, well, kingdom workers, not the church of tomorrow, the church of right now, which is something they need to know. And next Sunday, it all starts again. Third Friday events, our Nerf Wars, outreach trips, mix and move summer conferences. And next Sunday, the 8th, all of you parents from fifth graders up through 12th graders, you're invited to come here to the warehouse and talk with us after second service about our 2023 plans and how you and your team can get involved right here in the warehouse. So after our welcome to 2023 party at JC Youth Live, our youth groups at Journey's Crossing, we meet every week, 9.15 at 11.15 here in the warehouse. Come hang out with us for an hour of light snacks and really good youth ministry conversation right here in the warehouse. So come be a part next Sunday, January 8th. God's been doing really amazing stuff in and through our youth ministry in 2022. And here's one of our youth workers, Victor, to tell you a little bit about how that's all impacting him and how God is impacting students through our youth ministry here at Journey's Crossing. Happy New Year, everybody. Well, I was born in Bolivia. I came here for college back in 1985. And then I moved into to Maryland looking to continue my studies, but I was just like working. So I never went back to school. From that point on, life took a different turn and it was for the better overall, like for the better at the beginning. And although I wasn't solid and the walk with God at that point. I saw looking back now, you know, it's like how God had worked in my life by having me meet this woman. That's truly a blessing to me. So part of that is like, as well, I was thinking, I wanted to start with asking a question, you know, like to myself even, 
howled as a recovering alcoholic. Sorry. How does a recovering alcoholic find himself in youth ministry? Being so fulfilled. So, sorry I get emotional. It's very personal, but it pierces with joy because the transition has been so fantastic for me. I used to go to bars and and that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, part of my life was mainly just being at the bars and just lost out there with no purpose. And when I met my wife, slowly, it wasn't a, a sudden change, but when I met her at that bar, you know, things started changing and my outlook and life started changing. So I think God's plan was working way even back before I knew it, you know, and way before that even, because I was born in a Christian home. And I see, I was thinking like, God's just weaving this plan for me as I go. I take the next step and there's sort of something greater right behind it. So when I first came to Journeys, because I wanted to reconnect with God, I just lost my dad a few days, a few years back. So I was lost again. You know, I didn't really have my dad around. And the only thing I thought of was like, let me reconnect with God, you know, let's find our connection point with God again. And that's what led us to Journeys Crossing when we were at the Rio. I got a postcard in the mail and, and that's what got us in here. So that was the beginning. Then a couple of years later, I got baptized. So then my wife started volunteering for the kids ministry. And she said, why don't you volunteer with the kids ministry? So I said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so although I was, you know, a little unsure about how that was going to go, but it was almost like, like I was saying before, it was more like dad just putting the next step in front of me and me taking that action right and from that point i started loving doing that stuff right i was like okay i think i can find a place for myself here and of course these kids need to know about jesus i started making that connection literally i know that i need a connection with jesus as well right so it was i was getting a lot of it a lot for myself by doing for others basically so so that was the thing. And then COVID happened and somehow I got disconnected from Genesis Crossing. So I was just wandering around and, and not doing any kind of ministry or service. But then I came across Scott at the Walmart. This happened this year in January. And from across the way, you know, Scott's with Dominic and, and we looked at each other and said, hey, how you doing? And, and we started like just chatting and according to Scott, he says that like, he was hesitating to ask me to serve in the youth ministry, but something just propelled him to ask the question. Hey, Victor, you want to serve? And without hesitation, yes. <laughs> and, and we started meeting after that and I started coming here and, uh, and from that point it grew to more than just coming on Sundays and doing ministry, just being, you know, uh, some sort of help to Scott to grow the youth ministry so we can reach more kids, you know. I feel blessed, I feel fulfilled. I know there's a lot of things that, you know, a human can do as far as a profession, as a career or whatever, but you know, of all the things that I've done in my life as far as a career, as a job, youth ministry has been the thing that has fulfilled me the most. I'm being fulfilled every day because at the beginning, my father gave me a foundation and I, although I went on my own way and became an alcoholic or whatever for many decades you know I was trying to do my own thing he brought me back he brought me back to do something greater than myself and that was already preordained you know I just wow Right. And, you know, I see them like with their struggles, but I know that's also part of the part of the road, part of our, each one of us, part of each of our walks in this life, all those challenges. But eventually, you know, we look out and we say, God, you have a plan. What is, what is that? 
although I've been walking away from you, although I've been lost for so many years, what is that plan for me? And I hope for every kid that comes here and learns about you that one day they will ask themselves, God, what is your plan for me? I was lost, but he found me in his love for me. Oh, his love for me. When the sharpest words want to cut me down, gonna send a flood, gonna drown him out. I am brave, I am bruised, I am to be this is me look out cause here i come and i'm marching on the beat i drum i'm not scared to be seen i make no apologies this is me This is Jeff, and I'm celebrating my fifth New Year's Day as children's pastor here at Journey's Crossing. Now, I was just reflecting on what happened in JC Kids in 2022, and wow, it was a wild ride. I mean, a year ago, we were in the midst of a COVID surge, and we were this close to being required to again shut our doors on Sunday mornings. There were 50 kids gathering on Sundays, and the mood was pretty low. But wow, what a year it turned out to be. 168 kids made their first visit to JC Kids over the last 12 months, many choosing to return again and again. 17 kids made the decision to be baptized in 2022, but that's more than my previous four years here combined. We were once again holding an incredible trunk or treat event for our community out in the parking lot, giving away tens of thousands of pieces of candy. And last Sunday before Christmas, yeah, it wasn't 50 kids gathering anymore. There were 100 kids here. 2022 was an incredible ride. And I just want to take a moment to thank and celebrate the almost 70 members of the JC Kids team who make all of this possible. 
I mean, seriously, these folks are amazing. Greeting and checking in new families, caring for our littlest ones in the nursery, getting down on the floor and meeting preschoolers at their level, and relationally investing in small groups of elementary school students. You know, I get the privilege of seeing the amazing things they do each and every Sunday. None of the cool stuff I mentioned earlier, well, it doesn't happen without this awesome team. So thank you, JC Kids team. You rock. You know, I'm looking forward to so many great things in 2023. More kids visiting for the first time and returning. More kids experiencing the God who loves them for the first time. More kids choosing to be baptized. And there's already a couple planning on it for the next Baptism Sunday happening later this month. And more kids taking next steps in their journey. Plus, for the first time, we're taking a group of 17 third through fifth graders on an overnight trip to Richmond to attend CIY's Superstart Preteen Conference. 24 hours of worship, laughter, games, swimming, and hearing about how they can return to be kingdom workers in their homes, their schools, and their communities. Now, let me finish up by introducing two friends of mine who are gonna share some of the cool things happening in their life and on their journey. The first is Lindsay, who is one of those folks who visited Journey's Crossing for the first time in 2022, and is now an awesome member of the JC Kids pre-K team. The second is Karanda, who's a fourth grader who also visited for the first time in 2022, and was one of those kids who was baptized this year. Take a minute and listen to what God is up to in their lives. My name's Karanda, and I got to kids program here at Journey's Cross. I'm like happier down because there's a lot of nice here. And then I also get to engage with them. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wanted to like get baptized so I can really be connected with God. I wanted to be the closest I could be to God because God created me and that's what he wanted. Baptism has helped me see a little bit more of like God, like there's like little signs that he's there. Like sometimes, no, it's kind of hard to explain. But it's like, you know, he's there and he's like talking to you. It's like right next to you. It's like happiness and like calmness. I'm looking forward to going to church. I love the song and the people and the games. And I also love the Paula. You should probably get baptized. <laughs> and come here at Jimmy's Crossing, of course. But you should also probably get baptized. <laughs> That's like a 10 out of 10. My name is Lindsay Montgomery, and I have been coming to Journeys since the beginning of May. I actually attended Journeys Crossing like 15 years ago, I think, or maybe even more once it was in, and I loved it, but then I had kids and I stopped. Really, it was Jace. Right at Easter time, I had asked him, you know, why do we celebrate Easter? <laughs> And of course, you're thinking, Jesus, mommy. And he did not say that. He said candy and everything else. And I said, okay, you know, but you know why? And I said, Jesus. And he said, who's Jesus? And I literally just started crying. I felt like a failure that my kids didn't know who Jesus was. Then I thought, well, I don't go to church anymore. Why would they? You know, if I wasn't even explaining it to them or you think they just are gonna know automatically. Well, that's what brought me back. We came the next Sunday after that. I've had a lot of things happen. My dad passed away. I've had broken relationships. So I was kind of just on a strength of, I can do it on my own, you know, independent mom type of thing. I love Jesus. I always was a believer in Jesus. But when I asked Jace that, it just struck something in me. And we came and we haven't stopped. The first time I came, I was like, why did I stay away for so long? Literally right after that first time I saw the baptism thing and I was like I gotta go to next it, it was like a I gotta do this I gotta do this and I want to do you know what I mean and it was a bam 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 type of thing and then I saw how the kids loved everything and I was like this is perfect I just felt compelled to keep doing all of these different things right away the baptism was right before my birthday too two days before my birthday and I was like I'm about to be 40 it just all fit together for me. Something 
I think was inside of me. I don't know if it was the Holy Spirit, but something was pushing me to say, get involved. Everything that was said, it was just like it was coming to me. I was absorbing it in a whole different way that I ever had. You need this, Lindsay. Like, give it up. <laughs> like, give up your strength. Give it up. Trying to do it on your own. Like, you need this place. And as much as I was like, I'm good, I'm good. Jesus was right, because he was inside of me saying, you need this place. You need it. And you need to open up. You need to open your shell. You have to talk to people. You have to come here. Your kids need to learn. It was just, it was overwhelming, kind of scary, but I'm, I'm so thankful that I didn't listen to myself. <laughs> I actually listened to the Holy Spirit and I continued. So I felt like it was a new beginning. I felt that if I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this with my kids, the baptism was like a fresh start. That's what I felt. The big changes are, I read my Bible every day. I open my Bible, I read it, I'm on the Bible app. We listen to worship music. My kids are singing worship music. My kids are asking questions. They are engaged. They love their teachers, Jeff and Scott. And it's like our whole life now is Jesus-based. It's a completely different, it's a wonderful feeling. Sometimes it's scary because I don't know the next steps. And I don't know where it's leading me, but it's a big relief. It's still hard for me sometimes. It's hard for me to put 100% trust, but having this community, I've never even had friends who were Christ-like. I've never a whole community supporting me and being there for me. It's amazing feeling that I'll never leave. <laughs> and to see my kids growing up in this and just we're learning together. I'm learning things now that I never even knew. So I love it. Well, when I first came, I went to Next. And, and that's where I was like, okay, where, where can I fit in? And I was like, preschool, because I used to be a preschool teacher. And I'm like, I miss it. But when you have your own kids, you get burnt out. <laughs> Maybe this, this is God's calling me that I, I won't go and do that as a job, but here I'll be teaching. And so that's where it started. And then I was like, I wanna do a small group. And that was scary for me because I had never branched out and, and done anything like that where I'm gonna talk in front of people. And it just felt like a family. It's unexplainable feeling when you have never had it and just bombarded with love. It's such an amazing feeling. And just acceptance, I feel at home. I would just say that don't think that it can't happen in a short amount of time because the Lord will work in you. And I'm 40, like I, I'm older now, like why now? And I guess I had to go through the things that I went through and think that I can do it on my own and think that I was strong enough. It doesn't matter the time, it doesn't matter the age, it doesn't matter what you've been through. When he finds you again or you find him, be ready. <laughs> <laughs> be ready to dive in because it changes your life. My life has changed completely. And I'm so happy to be on this Christ journey. And to know now the difference between being a, like a Christian and a Christ follower. Like I truly feel, I know what it's like to be a Christ follower. I wanna serve whenever I can. I wanna be around this community. I want my kids to grow up in it. Um, I truly like being a Christ follower is the best. Hey, hello again. So we are going to take a few minutes to consider the words remembrance and anticipation together today during our communion and offering time. So go ahead, grab what you need to join with me, maybe some bread or some juice, whatever you have available. So I've changed locations, obviously. Um, I'm here at the Mark train station, not far from my home, because it represents the busyness of our days, doesn't it? The coming and the going, and for some of us, literally on the train, right? The schedules, the work demands. And it can be so difficult for us to slow down and to be still and to quiet our minds to something that sounds and looks more like this. And remember Jesus and anticipate what he has done, and what he's going to do. And that's why communion is so important for us as Jesus followers. It's an intentional time we can take to remember the last meal of Jesus, the last meal he had with his disciples, where he speaks of his sacrifice and what that means for you and me. And we can read about that in Matthew chapter 26. 
It says, during the meal, Jesus took and blessed the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. Take, eat, this is my body. And then taking the cup and thanking God, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood, God's new covenant poured out for many people for the forgiveness of sins. So let's first remember what Jesus has done for us by eating the bread together. And by drinking together as well. Now the other part of this time together in communion is anticipation. Following those words we read earlier in Matthew 26, Jesus said this, he said, I'll not be drinking wine from this cup again until that new day when I'll drink it with you in the kingdom of my father. So when we pause for communion, we not only remember Jesus, but we also anticipate his return. And it leads me to why we give as followers of Jesus as well. God's plan for the world that he created is for it to be made new again. And for all of us here on earth to be made right with him again. And the plan to make that all happen, uh, it's revealed through you and through me. So as we anticipate this promise and Jesus return, we give of our time, we give of our abilities, our resources, so that those around us can know Jesus through a meal or a prayer or a time of music and worship or even at an event that just communicates love and belonging. When we together give here at JC, as I hope you've seen today, God uses what we offer to change lives. So take the moment today and each week to remember Jesus' sacrifice through communion. And while you anticipate what God will do as a part of that time, give and be a part of his activity in the world. Give of your time, of your talents, and even be a part of what God is doing through Journeys Crossing by giving financially. And you can do that in one of the ways that you see on the screen right here. All right, let's pray together. Father, we ask that you would take what we give today and help others in the world around our church and our community and in our workplaces, help them see how much you love them and what you have done and what you're going to do and how you want to use them too. It's your, your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen.
Hey, Mark Wilkinson here, lead pastor at Journey's Crossing, and I hope you've really enjoyed our time together this morning. I want to say thanks to my staff team for taking a moment to record and to share some of what's going on in their lives. And I want to thank those volunteers who shared their stories that were powerful and touching. And I also especially want to thank all of you who make Journey's Crossing what it is, that volunteer and serve and, and give so that our church for the last 20 years has become better and better at meeting people where they are and helping them find and follow Jesus. 2023 is going to be an amazing year for you and for all of us at Journey's Crossing. And so I hope you had a great Christmas. For us at the Wilkinsons, Barbara and I, we had a new family member join us. As you know, in November, we lost a dear puppy named Theo who had been with us for 13 years. And at Christmas, Santa brought us a new puppy. This is Daisy. She is a nine week old Welsh Terrier pup and we're learning how to deal with puppies again. Her teeth are very sharp. She loves to bite ankles and cords and anything you she can get a hold of. But I wanted to introduce her to you because she's just been a real joy and a fun addition to our household. Daisies happen to be our wedding flower and it's also Barb's favorite flower. So we decided that she was just like a brand new daisy for us here in 2023. How was your Christmas? I hope it was great. We had all the girls, their husbands and the grandkids over. We did a little talent show after we had a big dinner. And one of my favorite things was when all the daughters and their husbands and the grandkids put together a reenactment of the nativity. And I wanted to show that picture to you because to me, this is just a hilarious, but also a very fun thing that our family did. And hope you had a great Christmas. And I wanted to talk to you for a few moments about what's coming up for this brand new year. I want to personally invite you to join us for a brand new series that we're starting calling Atomic Habits. How small things can make a tremendous difference. Maybe you're familiar with the book Atomic Habits that's been on the bestseller list now for, for the last few weeks. Well, I read that book and decided there's some powerful principles that when we align them with God's principles for our spiritual lives, that will help you and me really become more like Jesus in a greater way than ever. You see, one of the problems with our lives is that we tend to segregate the different areas of our lives and we don't really understand or think about the impact that one has upon the other. We might think about our thought lives or our personal work lives or our family lives, relational lives, our spiritual lives all of those kinds of areas. And maybe we try to work on each component without thinking about how they're interconnected. You see, God doesn't look at our lives so segregated like that. All of those areas make up who we are and all of those things are indeed spiritual. And so it's important for us to discover what are the little practices that can help us 
become the people God wants us to be. And when we begin focusing on spiritual habits, even the small ones, and we allow those to impact and influence us in a greater way every day of our lives, then our spiritual life begins to pour over into our relational lives. And we see our marriages getting better, our careers taking off at a new level. We find our financial situation improving, our emotional life, our thought life, all these areas begin to change because we begin to see that they are connected to our spiritual being. And a lot of times you and I, if you're like me, we make these resolutions at the beginning of the year and before the middle of February arrives, we end up failing and we just kind of give up and we think, well, next year we'll try again. Well, one of the reasons that we often fail is because we segregate these areas of our lives and we don't often think about the small pieces that lead up to finishing well. We're going to tackle some of those little pieces of our lives that will help us change spiritually. And I'm excited because when I begin to think about your life and my life and your family's life becoming more and more like Jesus, wherever you are, I begin to see our church having a greater impact on our community, that there will be more and more people around us that don't have a relationship with God that we'll be able to invite and to share the good news with. I also see our relationships getting better and our opportunity to serve the homeless, the poor, the needy, the emotionally hurting, the broken. All of those things will take off at the next level because we're focusing on what's rudimentary and foundational to our being, our relationship with Jesus and becoming more and more like him in all areas of our lives. So join me next week as we kick off this new series called Atomic Habits, as we begin really digging into becoming who God wants us to be. I'm excited for our year together. I'm excited for what God wants to do in your life, your marriage, your kid, or whatever state of relationship that you have. Good things are coming for 2023 for our church and for you. Let's embrace this year with a fresh start. And God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Now let's close out our time today as the band sings one last song. And let this be kind of our hearts worshiping and taking the words of this song away with us as it kind of leads us into this brand new year, January 1st, 2023. I love you. You mean the world to me. This church matters so much to me and it matters so much to Jesus. God bless you. Daisy, say bye. 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 Here's a treat. Happy New Year. God bless you. We love you so much. We're so glad to be your pastors and being a part of the Journeys Crossing family. We can't believe we get to be here and serve you guys and join this wonderful place that we call home. those hands together like this. Come on. Saturday was silent. Surely it was too. Since when has it possible ever stop you? Friday's disappointment. The Sunday's empty too. Since when has impossible ever stop you? This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the tribal traveling.